Good morning, everyone. This is Matt Leshberg with 1836 Property Management in beautiful Austin, Texas, as always. We're in Central Texas. That's where we, we live, we work, and where we're going to stay. I am 1836 Property Management, as stated, and we service the greater Austin area. Um, if you have any questions, Feel free to put those on the right side of your screen and we'll chat with them. And we can address those as we go through our crowdcast today. Uh, we have Paula and Eric with us today. They are with Mainstream Services and they're licensed, experienced, knowledgeable vendor partners. They service the greater Austin area for all of our plumbing needs. They are one of our vendors. We have uh, we service over 700 units now. And so uh, I think we probably run them back if they. They had to service them all at one time because you know, nothing happens when you want it to. It happens when it's the middle of the night or Christmas Day or something like that. But um, they're here to help you guys as investors get to know them as one of our vendors and also get to know how to better manage um, and plan for your investing future. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, mainstream services guy, if you would not mind. Sure. Um, I'm Paula and this is Eric. Uh, we are locally uh, located as in Central Texas, up in Georgetown, Texas. Uh, we do service from Georgetown, points east, west, and south, all the way down to Buda. Um, we're happy to work with 1836 and their owners, as well as their tenants. There are seven of us that work here. Uh, three of, of the plumbers, Ken, Eric, and Peter, are master plumbers. Uh, we have journeyman plumbers and tradesmen. So everybody is licensed um, and registered. Uh, with the state. we uh, Eric has been plumbing since he's been 15. Actually, Peter, Benjamin, and CJ are the same. So Eric is in his 30s. He's got well over 15 years of service uh, experience. We do have a commercial component to us. We are ground up construction as well. Um, we do tenant improvement, finish outs of commercial spaces as, res as well as residential property. We have experience in gas piping for medical systems and dental offices and stuff. So we do offer a lot of things other than just residential service. Um, I mean, there, like she's saying, there's not much out there that we haven't seen or had some experience mm -hmm. with. There's not much surprises us these days anyway. Yeah. So uh, I know we're still in the intro, but you mentioned something I want to at least pull out. Um, unfortunately, in American society, I feel like a lot of time we have investors that come to us and, and they're, uh, they're scared. They're scared somebody's going to take advantage of them. They're not you know, scared of everyday life, but, but they don't know us. Um, you guys are from Georgetown, Texas. I'm going to brag a little bit much. You know, that my cousin is actually the old mayor. And I'm really proud that I grew up with him. And he is one of the best men that I know. I mean, he is just one of the most solid, personable, uh, intelligent humans I know. And to have him as y'all's mayor, you know, I think y'all have the, the right direction for the city as a whole, that politics haven't taken over and that you can still have someone guide you by principles like that. But um, if I expect that you're in Georgetown, you said you've been doing this um, as you got master plumbers and so on and so forth. So in the interest of letting people know, how many years does it take to become a plumber at those levels? So they can have a concept of, you know, I can actually trust these people because no one's going to burn 25 years of a career to try to steal $20 from me. Right. What does that look like in experience? So uh, the, the plumbing trade in the state of Texas is the only independently governed uh, trade body. So HVAC technicians, electricians, they they get their licenses through the Texas Department of License and Registration. So alongside hairdressers and, you know, vet technicians, you know, it, it's all lumped into one big governing body. But we actually have the, the board of plumbing examiners that regulates who gets into the trade and and what it takes to become licensed and, and bonded as a plumber so when you start uh your career you're registered as an apprentice for at least two years after the two mark uh, which is all verified with the board of examiners uh, you know you have to submit your hours and, and pay your fees to have your apprentice license uh you are uh, able to take your first license level test which is to get your tradesman license and uh, everything's tiered with 
four year gaps between. So two years or four years, two years as an apprentice, four years as a tradesman, four years as a journeyman. And the, the levels uh, of licenses are, they allow you to do different kinds of work unsupervised. So an apprentice can't legally go out and do any plumbing work by themselves. They have to be coupled with a licensed plumber of any license level uh, to engage in work, whether at a commercial or residential property. Uh, tradesmen plumbers can do some limited construction work and general residential service. Uh, a journeyman can do any kind of work, but they can't own or operate a plumbing company. That's what the, the master license tier is designed for. And if you are to be a responsible master plumber, that is uh, an owner of a company, you have to uh, verify with the state that you carry a million dollars liability insurance for work that you do. So. And we carry uh, two million dollars. Yeah. Um, so because we we are in the commercial construction company, right. you know, portion of that. So. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not saying there's not one or two bad actors, but I think people from other states don't really understand the pride we have um, with our um, homegrown folks that we expect them to behave in a certain way. Right. And we that grew up here don't really think it too kindly of those that don't treat right. others well. And uh, and also, I don't think you know that it takes ten years to get to those levels. Right. And nobody's going to do ten years in a career and then throw it away after going through all that because they're trying to take advantage of someone out there. We had right. a we had an incident last week uh, over the last couple of weeks, and I actually think you guys might have bid the job. You bid the job, you bid it properly, and the owner who didn't have a background with any of this said, oh, that's way too high. I'm calling my own folks. They ordered their own parts, had them delivered to the neighbor, called their own folks. Their folks, their, their own person said, how much was the fee? Oh, no, this isn't going to be nearly like that. It's going to be way more. Yeah. And then they called us back and said, um, I'm sorry, can we go back to Main Street? Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and it was something we were cheap. We, we want quality work at fair prices right. because you can't stand behind cheap work. You have to hide Right. Uh, right. It comes yeah. back to bite you. And so yeah. I, just, I, I want our viewers to know that, uh, you know, we don't want to overpay, but we don't want to underpay because it comes back to bite you. We want something that's done right the first time. We right. don't have to go back on and give it some money stands by. So anyway, that's my little dying tribe because I don't, I don't think our viewers know about you guys or plumbers in general in state of Texas and what it takes to get to that level and what our expectations are. So it's, it's it, a, in a career for, you know, certainly. Absolutely. And it takes a long time to, to achieve those things. Yeah. And a lot of, a lot of digging work is, to be honest, a lot of oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. So. Yeah. Through those apprentices, they do work. <laughs> you don't have to go out there in the Texas heat and start digging unless you really want to be there. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Okay. So let, let's get back on topic here. I apologize for that, but I think it was good background information. So tell us, um, what, what are you need to know about plumbing at their rental properties? Okay. So, I mean, the, the, the most common issues that you see are going to be, uh, you know, your fi fixtures leaking, uh, your water heaters, your sewer lines or water lines backing up and or leaking. Fixtures, those are, you know, any, any place where you get water, uh, a lavatory faucet, a kitchen faucet, hose bib, anything like that, uh, leaking they've corroded. We have hard water here in Texas. I'm from, I mean, originally Boston, Massachusetts. We, we have soft water up there. And so you come down here, you get that hard water and that crusty scale and whatnot. That's that's the, a surefire way to wear out a faucet. Um, and so, you know, tubs, toilets, all of that, it affects it all. Um, water heaters, you know, they leak things. Uh, we were just talking about this earlier. Eric has a house with a water heater that was built in 1979. And he still has the water heater from still 1979. Makes right. It makes the hottest water. You're not going to find heaters that that last like that nowadays. Yeah. You know, things are, are are built differently. They they wear out a lot faster than they used to. Uh, sewer lines and water lines backing up. Um, those you know, with the weather that we're having now, the rain and then a long period of drought, and then you get some rain like we're supposed to get in a you know that ground shifts. Your pipes move and they break and trees get thirsty and they sniff out just a little bit of water and they go right in there and they block your sewer line and then you got some 
the larger issues, you know. Right. Um, so th those are the, you know, I'd get the, the biggest things. Yeah, it's amazing how frequently those happen to. I don't think uh, people realize that, you know, this is going to happen to me uh, right. or my rental property. And it's a matter of when. We have a surprising number of owners that say, I lived there five years and nothing ever went wrong. When I moved out, everything broke. That's right, because everything is built to last about five years. Five years. You left yeah. when it all cracked down. But yeah. no one's out to get you. You just got lucky for a while, and now those two roots are growing in, and they're thirsty, and that's that's part of the way it goes. So, well, let me uh, pop up a poll real quick to get to know our, our viewers a little bit. Um, have you, and this should be visible on the topic, excuse me, not the bottom of the screen, have you experienced a significant plumbing issue at your rental property? If yes, did you have the proper maintenance reserve funds to cover the expense? So we'll put that in there, see if we have any viewers. Uh, oftentimes we have folks that watch this afterwards. Uh, they uh, they sign up and then they'll get the email to it afterwards. So they may or may not attend today, but they'll at least know what we're talking about. So let's let's get into part of that discussion, which was proper maintenance reserve funds. We tell our owner, based on the age of the property, every dollar we send you, you need to put 10 to 20 cents of that dollar away. Depending on the age of the home, hey, if you don't use it, great, you've got extra money saved. But if you're burning through it all, you're just waiting for something catastrophic to happen. So talk to me about average costs associated with pumping issues. I realize that there's, there's no standards, well, in my mind, because every time you go to a property, you have no idea what you're going to cover. you got to replace the hot water heater. The closet's too small because of that new standard. you got to rebuild the whole closet. Go get permits. Good luck in the city of Boston. Right. And it spirals out of control. So what are some typical costs that people just run into? Well, um, you know, with 1836, as well as some of the other management companies that we do service work for, there's generally a, a threshold that, you know, $500 or whatever, that the under which, you know, direct approval from the owner isn't necessary. And what we've found is that, you know, a house is a house, you know, plumbing, you know, and it's different orientations is plumbing. Everybody has a faucet and they're all variations on the same tune. And so what we've really tried to do is tailor a lot of the, the work that we do to fit within that price constraint. Mm -hmm. uh, and so some, some examples, you know, would be, uh, you know, a kitchen faucet, uh, at a rental property, you know, it's, it could be anywhere between five and 10 years old. It's got some hard water scale built up things. Moreover, you know, they just wear out. People are tough on them. You and me at my house, you know, I probably could stand to have a new faucet every five years. Um, you know, you just get gunk in there. That's hard to clean out. Uh, and the majority of stuff now is plastic, which degrades over time. It's brittle. Um, so for less than $500, you know, you can have a, a high quality faucet replaced. Uh, with, you know, your aging one at your rental property, uh, you know, we generally gravitate towards the brands that have good warranties uh, because we are liable for the fixtures that we provide and install. So, uh, for example, like a Delta brand faucets, you know, they have a lifetime warranty and it's not the lifetime of, of the owner, it's the lifetime of the faucet itself. They, they don't hesitate to, you know, replace parts or send you new faucets if something goes bad. So right. generally that's... Um, Another, another example would be a water heater. Uh, these days, it costs on average about $2,000 to replace a water heater. Um, and that's standard residential 40 or 50 gallon water heater um, anywhere. Break that down for me a little bit, like parts, labor, perpets, whatever it may be. Well, how did you come up with that number? Because, you know, in my brain, the, the before inflation brain of 1995 says, well, that should only be a thousand dollars. Somebody, right. you know, how in the world did we get from one to two? But the, I know there's logic. I'd like our, our listeners to know what that is. So honestly, you know, we were it, it, water heaters this year have increased about five times in pricing. Yeah, about eight um, percent. Yeah, it, yeah. There was there was there was a month that it was every month we got a notification from the supply house. Hey, heaters are increasing. Heaters are increasing. Um, and so we're in this kind of weird spot, you know, with, with all plumbing and it doesn't matter if it's PVC, it's either increasing or cast iron or a, an appliance or a fixture it's increasing in price and sometimes hard to find. 
Um, so there, there's sometimes that 40 gallon water heaters aren't at the local supply house. We have to go to a different supply house, which is farther south or a smaller supply house. So it's the name brands and whatnot. But generally speaking, you can count on that being about a 50-50 split. 50-50 right. split as far as, it's, uh, you know, uh, the heater and, and labor. Uh, and the heater includes parts and, and whatnot. We always include new water lines uh, when we install our heaters uh, just because the, that, that liability. And you don't want to put something old on something new. So we try to don't want the leak either. No, you know, we don't want the leak, you know. Exactly. And so we don't want you to have the leak. So, you know, anything that we can mitigate ahead of time, you know, that that kind of proactive thinking, we're gonna do that for you because we do see ourselves as your eyes and ears, you know, in your house and ears in the sense of, you know, hey, we hear a noise. There's it has nothing to do with why we're there. We were called out for something else, but there's a hissing in the wall. You know, that's there's no water or anything that that's could be indicative of something else. And so, you know, we will do our best to, you know, once we're in your home to let you know, hey, we see some other issues that you, we really feel you ought to look at. But generally speaking, it's a 50 50 split you know, for heaters. Something you said was you used the term proactive. And I, I find that interesting because you're you're using it as if you're doing something preventative. Mm-hmm. One of our uh, mottos, if you will, is that we protect our investors from visible and invisible risks. Right. The invisible risk is we cheap out on something, we avoid it, and that $20 part floods the house. Right. Now, if you're lucky, you get out with a tenant who doesn't throw a fit, stays with you, but you're paying a deductible, your home is flooded, it's right. not the thing. And we battle all the time with our investors. Now, we've got some that just get it. They, they, they just get it. And we've got uh, probably 80% in the middle, like the general population. And we've got 10% who want to fight us on every penny. And, and they, they don't understand that spending $20 now is preventing a catastrophic event later because those supply lines, it, it, it takes almost nothing. It takes, it takes five minutes for a toilet flex to blow off a wall and flood a house. Five minutes. But you get 65 pounds of pressure coming out of a three quarter inch line. And uh, five minutes. And relevant to toilets, right? We get a call, the tenant states that the toilet is running all the time. You know, that is relevant to the internal components of the toilet, the fill valve and then the flapper, right? That stuff easily replaced. It's not very expensive. But at the same time, we always, it's our policy to replace the flexible supply hose that goes from the valve at the wall to the bottom of that toilet fill valve. You know, that's an extra $12 for that part. Um, but if we didn't, then we are now assuming the liability because we unscrewed it and we screwed it back on. Mm -hmm. Why not replace that? You know, it's, I don't know if it's so much preventative maintenance because it could last forever. You know, it could, it could be another five years and that flex is fine. Yeah. But it's, it's more of like an active anticipation, right? Because old doesn't marry new very well. Right. right. It, it, at, at all. So whenever you're replacing something and you can replace the other part, you always want to do that. Um, because new, new likes new, and it just works. We've we have found it works better in the long run. Well, it's twelve dollars or fifty bucks, right? Then right. you won't have to worry, right? I, I, I even on my own property, I don't want to deal with the flood in my house. It would be massive. Yes. Right? I mean, furniture. If I, I can't even wrap my head around it. I don't even want to do it. Yeah, a twenty dollar part can cost twenty thousand dollars damage very easily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, on this topic, one of the things that I have frequently seen over my years of entering random properties across the area is the, uh, for folks that don't know, every time you have a water supply run, you should have a shut off valve. You should also have a main run outside of the curb, which is never accessible, although it shouldn't be in our property. Right. Um, it's always buried. It's always rusted and no one ever can get to it when they need it. And then they complain when well, you guys have to dig it out and replace it. But every appliance should ever shut off. How many of those things do you guys find inoperable? Like 30%? Because 
they just they freeze up. It don't work, and then that that toilet starts leaking, and you can't turn the water off. Right. Right. Yeah, I'd say I'd say you know three out of every ten toilets we go to repair, you know, we end up having to to add another line item that we had to shut the water off to the house and replace that that shut off. But mm -hmm. it is, you're right. It's extremely important to be able to isolate, you know, those fixtures. You know, uh, something that frequently happens, and this is like almost always an after hours event, is is they go to turn the shower on and the handle comes off in their hand. Right? <laughs> they can't turn the shower off. Well, a shower, you know, that that is one of the fixtures that typically doesn't have an isolation valve, right? Every once in a while, you'll see an access panel behind the wall and they'll have two valves to shut the hot and cold. Almost, almost never. Um, so making sure that those shutoff valves are functional can, can defer extra charges like after hours charges because the sink is running like crazy or the toilet won't stop you know, going. <laughs> So yeah, you're right. Or, or those, the multi-turn valves where you have to turn them, turn them, turn them, turn them, turn them, and they start leaking as soon as you touch them, right? We're going to replace them with a quarter turn. So you can get down there and just go, whoop, and it and it shuts off right away. You're not having to panic, you know, turn, 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 and have it get stuck almost off, but not quite, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I just, I'm thinking back over the years of all the plumbing incidents I've seen in the end uh I just wish everybody understood the value of prevention because once it starts leaking, yeah, you're done. It's too late. Yeah. yeah, and on that preventative, you know, we do recommend at least every two years have a licensed plumber walk through your property and and take pictures, take to look at everything, test everything, turn off every stop, look at every flex line, test all the faucets. Let's see what the pressure is coming into the house. Let's drain and flush that water heater and, and let you know, because we're going to look at it with really different eyes than you guys are. And, you know, we'll make those recommendations of, of what we see as potential hazards. You know, we, we're on the topic of what are things cost. Mm -hmm. And um, so on that topic, we're going to jump this to our next poll shortly. Um, do you guys have a service that is written and says this is what the cost is to just go walk the property? Because I'm going to be honest with you. We, uh, so I have, um, I have a broker's license and other various licenses. Uh, but one of those is I'm actually licensed at the highest level of real estate inspector. I don't practice, but I've just maintained that. And so to me, prevention is everything, right? How do I see it and prevent it or at least disclose it? Do you guys ever go to properties and say, we're going to do a walkthrough and we'll give you a report on what needs to be handled? Absolutely. What do you charge for that? It's six fifty. dollars um, With 325 of that six fifty, dollars should we, you know, discover like, hey, there's a couple of flex lines, you know, some other things that goes towards the repairs. Um, so if we, if we go out for $650, we walk the property and we find that one of the toilets is in incredible disrepair. Um, you know, and it's not worth not worth fixing. Uh, and we'll we'll get back to that too because a, a lot of our uh, our intentions and and the way our our operating procedures are structured is that it typically isn't worth repairing something if it can be readily replaced. Right. Right. No, I'm fine. So you no, know, we go that. out. We go out for the flat fee of six fifty. We inspect all of the relevant plumbing accessible and visible in the house. Uh, and if we do find something that can be replaced. You know, up to three hundred and twenty-five of that six fifty can be applied towards the to the repair or the replacement. So that would include, you know, a shower cartridge that feels really sticky or or it's dripping because, uh, you know, on that as well, a lot of tenants, you know, and including you know homeowners, right? Me, my showers, you know, drips every once in a while. I can just live with it and ignore it. But you know, yeah. I'm out there at the house looking specifically for that. I can say, well. That cartridge should be replaced before it becomes a panic emergency in the right in the off. middle of the night, you know. And we'd be able to accomplish that for the the allotted free trade. Plus, you're getting you're getting pictures. You know, we take pictures of everything, so you are now seeing your your fixtures. You know, everything at, at all points. That I, I don't know how often you know investors get to see their investment and walk through their homes. You, you're getting you're getting experienced professional eyes touching, looking, seeing all of your, your 
fixtures, your plumbing, and, and letting you know the condition that it's in and what our recommendations are. That includes knowing the pressure that's coming into your home and put, just putting a quick scope down the sewer line and say, hey, you got a belly or, you know, hey, it looks really great or, you know, something like that. Yeah, and this takes us perfectly into our next poll and then, and then our last topic after that is uh, routine preventative maintenance. I've got the poll up right now if anybody wants to uh, to select their option on that. Is this something you're willing to prioritize? And uh, I've got to tell you, there's very few people um, that are investors that go, I understand putting money into my investment means it will go up in value. You're not burning money. Right. You're at minimum maintaining what you think exists or it's going up in value because it's better maintained. People think that if they don't spend money that that thing is producing more. And the truth is it's going down in value because nothing lasts uh, forever and things are great. And so you've got to reinvest. Uh, my, my story of folks is always, when you go to open your 401k, you don't give them 10 grand and say, well, I'm done. I'm just gonna retire in 15 years. You give them 10 grand, and then you give them money monthly right. for the right. next 30 years. Mm -hmm. And you hope that Wall Street is going to take care of it. <laughs> you know, at least in real estate investing, you've got something tangible that's insured. And you know what the value of that asset is. You know, if it was a grain or cotton or pork, rather. I mean, it's an actual asset that lives in the world. It's not magic on that chart that they don't even send you certificates for anymore. So I love real estate investing. We've done very well with the first plane. Our staff has as well. And um, we've got some new software that's going to really help our owners. Their but I digress. So the next poll is whether or not you are willing to um, prioritize that preventative maintenance. And if you are, I think whether you're one of our clients or somebody else, you need to talk to your property manager because um, our PMs know their clients. And there is a massive difference between a relationship for people who are on the same theme and people who think we're out to get them because honestly, we don't have the time to get Everybody's working. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and, and honestly, it's not in our, uh, from, from, a, from a plumbing company standpoint, it is not in our best interest to, to scam somebody or to take advantage of them. You know, that's cutting our nose off to spite our face. We, we want you guys to be customers for life. You know, and so we're going into your homes, right? We're, we're going in, you know, you, you have a family there that's renting your property. We're going to treat them with integrity and respect, you know, because it's their home too. And so, you know, we don't want to do anything that's going to jeopardize, you know, that situation. And I, I don't think people understand how hard small business is and how much it, it becomes a family thing and it's blood, sweat and tears. And uh, there is no amount of money that's going to make me go back after I've spent this many years delivering integrity. Yeah. You, and, you can't make me. No. And, you know, you talk about family. Main Street has seven people. Five of us are related. I'm I'm the mom. Eric is one of my sons. So you've got <laughs> Peter and Benjamin and CJ. They're all my sons. And then we have Stephen and Ken owns the business. Um, so there's there's two that aren't related. And of the, the four kids, um, three... There's, there's six grandchildren. So they all have wives. They all have children. They all have homes, you know. So they, they have an invested interest in making sure that, you know, we're taking care of everybody because they want to take care of themselves too, you know. Life. Yeah. But, and life really is easier when we all work together. It just, yeah. there's no other way to do it. Trying to uh, circumvent things and get somebody is much more effort than just collaborating and getting along. So. Right. I'll, I'll leave it there on that. So let's talk about uh, plumbing issue prevention. Um, we do provide some troubleshooting best practice tips for our residents, how to mitigate plumbing issues on our home. But an investor, where they're in California, they're in China, we've got investors around the planet. Um, what can they do as their part for preventative maintenance to protect that investment? Uh, for one, the you know we've talked about hard water scale and the effect that it has on accelerating the aging and corrosion of plumbing fixtures. If your property has provisions to install a water conditioning system, or it does have a water, a water conditioning system already, it, it's very important to make sure that that's working properly. Uh, I do see quite often in the field, you know, you may have a water softener in your garage, but they're very often defunct. And I think because water softeners typically are kind of a gray area, right? 
we install them, we uninstall them. Uh, we can also do aftermarket or after the fact work to get you provisions to install one in your garage or, or anywhere else in the house, but we don't service them. Uh, typically the, the inside maintenance of, of the water softeners is it's usually a water conditioning company, uh, because they are, they're sort of, uh, they have like a dealer relationship with the manufacturers to get the replacement parts. Right. Uh, there's also some pretty complicated, you know, training that you've got to go through to figure out how those things work. And they're very different across brands, but, uh, you know, very often I'll see that they've been in the garage, they've been in there for 20 or 30 years. Uh, and the tenant, you know, is unaware that they need to put salt in it. Uh, Always. You know, so that that's one that is the number one thing that if you want your plumbing fixtures and your plumbing system to operate problem free for longer here, here, yeah, here in Texas, uh, it would be to make sure if you, it's possible that you have a functioning water conditioning system. The uh, the second uh, uh, way to sort of be on top of things and to be proactively preventative would be to do walkthroughs, you know. Um, I, I understand that, you know, you may have a property that in the tenant's been there for a decade, but more often I, I suspect the case is, you know, every two or three years, you're going to get a new tenant on average. And, and that in, in that case, you know, you have a, a make ready and you have a walkthrough, things are evaluated, doorknobs are replaced and, and all that kind of stuff. That is the prime time to inspect the toilets, inspect the faucets, you know, inspect the water heater. And if it looks nasty and it looks old, the best thing you can do to prevent future issues is just to replace it. And, you know, we're not talking, you know, the water heater is, is really the, that is the most expensive big plumbing thing that you can typically do. That's a recurring cost. Uh, sewer repairs, of course, they can get up into the thousands of dollars. But those are extenuating circumstances. Not every house is going to have a broken sewer line in their yard. Every house will eventually have to get their water heater replaced. Um, but that's, you know, that's one of the, the the most important things you can do is just be aware of what the plumbing in the house superficially looks like, you know. Uh, and if possible, if you have the the inclination to, to preventatively replace those, then you're going to prevent after hours issues or or inconvenient calls, basically. And it's ten dollars today or thousand dollars tomorrow. Exactly. No, yeah. And, and you know, a lot of what we're seeing is a lot of uh, new home investors, they want to buy a house and flip it and then put it right back on the market. And they want it to look like, you know, all the all the things that are out there and whatnot. And so they go on Amazon and they buy all these, you know, nondescripts, who, who Un knows, unbranded, un unbranded yeah. you know, beautiful faucets. I mean, they look great, but then, you know, you get them in there and a year later, they're crusted or, or they're, they're leaking and we don't know, uh, you know, can't replace you can't, re you can't repair them. And so you end up replacing them. So, you know, really thinking that long term, this is a well-known, very established brand such as Moen Delta. The parts are readily available. Should I need them? I, I, I know where to get them. My plumber knows where to get them, you know, sticking with things like that. It's perfect advice for everybody. So um, we're wrapping up our time. So I want to be respectful of all of our viewers as well, because uh, they're welcome to follow up with us. And of course, if you guys, um, I want to thank you for your time today and just participating and being a great partner for us so that we can deliver great services to our clients, help them reach their investing goals. I mean, these are real life things. People are saving for retirement. You know, they're uh, taking care of, of aging parents in a rest home with them. They're putting kids in college. Uh, this is not a pipe dream. This is something that the vast majority of people in America have the ability to do. In fact, 83% of real estate investors um, well, one to three homes. They're not institutional investors. So it is more a pop deal. And, and people need to consider this because it flat out works. I've got the math and the experience to, to deliver to folks. But if they want to get in touch with you guys in Main Street, where do they find you? Where can they get in touch? And I'm going to try to pipe it in the chat window as you say. Okay. Um, where we're located in Georgetown, you can call us at 512 930 9535. Um, or you can reach out to us via email, and that's Mainstream Services Inc. at yahoo.com. Mainstream Services is plural. INC. 
at yahoo.com. Yahoo.com. All right, I think I got it right. Anyway, uh, when our marketing product put together the uh, package, we'll make sure that if I you know, type something by one letter and I hurry, <laughs> get it correct. And you guys can only be found on Google as well. Or the best way to just have a conversation with them. So um, it, it's so important that we have great community vendors and, and we collaborate with them to deliver the best services and the best integrity to our clients. And thank you guys so much for just being a, a partner with 1836 helping us deliver that quality and um, just just helping our client feel they meet their goals out there. It's our pleasure to work with you. Absolutely. It's our pleasure to work with you guys too. Awesome, guys. So thank you so much for your time. Thanks for watching today. And if you want to find us as well, you can always Google us. Um, we've got um, probably four times as many reviews online as anybody else because we care. And you can find us at 512 uh, 9944323 here in uh, beautiful Austin, Texas. And we'll see you guys soon at the next webinar. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Eric and Paula. Bye bye. Uh -huh. Thank you. Bye.